This is part 37 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing Web API versioning using a custom version header. This is continuation to part 36 where we discussed Web API versioning using a query string parameter. So please watch part 36 before proceeding. So here's what we want to be able to do. Notice within the request, we have got a custom version header. I named it x dash student service dash version we can give it any name we want and I have set it to a value of 2 so our web API service should be able to read this custom version header and return version 2 student objects as you can see here if we specify the version as 1 then the survey should return version 1 student objects if you don't specify this header altogether, then the Web API service should fall back to version 1 and return version 1 student objects. So let's see how to achieve this. This is the same example that we worked with in our previous video. At the moment, notice we are using a query string parameter to version our Web API service. And here is the code which reads the query string parameter value. So let's come in these two lines of code. We are still going to default version number to 1. Just in case, if the request object doesn't contain our custom version header, we want the Web API service to fall back to version 1 and return version 1 student objects. That's the reason we are defaulting it to version 1. Now let's create a variable which is going to store the name of our custom header. So let's call the variable custom header and I'm going to initialize this to x dash student service dash version you can give it any name you want now let's check if the request object headers collection contains our custom header so if the request headers collection contains our custom header then we want to read our custom version header value and we want to store that in this version number variable so version number equals Let's use the request object again, request.headers. We're going to use getValues method. And to this method, we need to pass the name of our custom header, which we have in this variable. And if you look at what this method returns, it returns i enumerable of string objects. And we want just the first string, which contains our version number. So to get that first string, we're going to use the links first or default method. So at this point, in this version number variable we have the version number so let's quickly build our solution and test with Fedla at the moment within the request we have not specified our custom version header at all so in this case the web API service should fall back to version 1 and return us version 1 student objects now let's include our custom version header and set it to a value of 2 so in this case the Web API service should return us version 2 student objects. If we set it to 1, we should get back version 1 student objects. There we go. But we have a slight problem with this example. Users can specify the same header twice in the request. So here, we have specified our custom version header twice. So in this case, the Web API service should read one of the header values and then return us that specific version of the student objects. In this case, the survey should return us version 1 student objects, but look at what we got, version 2 student objects. Let's understand why this is happening. Let's run the project in debug mode so we can debug and see what's going on. Let's set a breakpoint on this line right here and issue the same request from Fiddler once again. The breakpoint is hit. At this point, if you look at the version number variable, it's still initialized to its default value of 1. Let's step through the code. Now when this line completes execution, let's see what the value is going to be. At the moment, the value is still 1, but when this line completes execution, look at its value it is 1 comma 1. Why is this? This is because we have specified the version header twice and basically it is appending the values of these two headers using a comma. That's the reason we have 1 comma 1. 
and since the value is 1 comma 1 it is always going to go into this else block and return as version 2 student objects let's look at that in action so when I press F10 here look at that it checks if version number equals 1 that's not true so it's going to go to the else block and return us version 2 objects. So what do we want to do in this case? In this case, we want to check if the version number string contains a comma. If it contains a comma, then we want to take the first number from the comma separated list of version numbers. So let's see how to do that now. Let's first detach the debugger. And then here, we are going to check if version number contains comma if it contains comma then what do we want to do we want to take the first number from the comma separated list of version numbers so version number equals version number dot we want a substring so let's use the substring and we want a substring starting from index position 0 and until we have found a comma in that string so to find the index position of where we have comma we're going to use the same string again and on that let's use index of function and we want the index of comma so this is going to give us the first version number within that comma separated list of version numbers so let's build our solution one more time and quickly test with Fiddler when we execute this we should get version 1 student objects if we include our custom version header only once still we should get version 1 student objects if we set the version to 2 we should get version 2 student objects so it's all working as expected and here we have the code to get the version number from our custom version header thank you for listening and have a great day